Plasma Types Electromagnetic World We live in an electromagnetic world where at higher frequencies there are etheric fields while at lower frequencies we have the material field, the Earth. The expression of electromagnetism is done by creating a field. The ether, like the noble gases of the ionosphere, have the ability to react to these fields producing light due to ionization. These reactions are called plasma phenomena and they exist everywhere around us, having a dynamic of motion and a periodicity. In this section we will examine each plasma phenomenon separately to get a better understanding of the term plasma. Regions of space As we have said in Book 3, space is divided into sublunar and superlunar regions. In the sublunar place, we have the four elements that make up the material field lower frequencies. Earth and water, as denser, are in the center, while air and fire surround them. Thus we have the background with Earth, land and water, while the atmosphere is divided into the homosphere, which refers to the element of air, where the water cycle also occurs, and the heterosphere above, which refers to the element of fire and where the cycle of fumes occurs. The superlunar place is ethereal, the fifth element of matter, which is apparently a fluid with a density less than hydrogen. The ether covers all the superlunar fields of high and even higher frequencies. When the ether of the nearby superlunar place or the noble gases and hydrogen of the sublunar place referred to the element of fire receives electromagnetism, then the molecules of the respective element react to the electromagnetism by emitting light. Each element of the ionosphere, like the ether, illuminates differently, creating phenomena such as the sun, daylight, the moon and the stars of the electromagnetic dome. Depending on the height of the layer of each element, we have a different reaction to the cosmic electromagnetic field which comes vertically from bottom to top and vice versa. Plasma phenomena In essence, we call plasma the phenomenon of ionization of a compressed medium fluid due to electromagnetic field radiation. That is the reaction of its molecules to electromagnetic radiation within a field at a specific pressure and temperature. The plasma phenomenon can be at different levels, resulting in the creation of layers of plasma types, depending on the medium and the height it is, in relation to the sublunar and superlunar place. Plasma Sun, Sun The Sun is a plasma phenomenon, a derivative of the positive refraction of cosmic electromagnetic energy where it is concentrated and imprinted, concentrated on the helium layer in the ionosphere that borders with the ethereal space. It happens in a semi-ethereal environment at around 5,500 km. As we have seen, the cosmic energy that emerges from below is separated and refracted into positive and negative following internal reflection at the boundaries of the field and creates the Sun and the Moon.
The sun is created by electrically excited helium and hydrogen molecules or ether in the upper layers of the ionosphere at the boundary where it borders the ether. Due to the geometry of the source of cosmic energy and the dynamic of the movement of the electromagnetic field, the sun, shaped like a lens, is created at a height of approximately 5,500 km, having a diameter of approximately 51 km, and moves spirally, creating day, night, and also the seasons. It is the pilot electromagnetic source which creates daylight in the lower layers of the atmosphere. The ionization in the element helio gives white yellow light like the sun itself, even having the same UV radiation values. The helium element is ionized where the positive plus component of the plus and minus refracted cosmic energy comes concentrated. The sun is imprinting the ceiling of the field of the cosmic radiance concentrated. Plasma daylight, the light of the day. Daylight is created below the sun-created layer in the ionosphere. There are no volatile gases there, and because of them the daytime sky has these colors. As the sun passes by, an electromagnetic field is applied to the masses of these gases in the ionosphere. Thus, high-energy electrons are produced which very quickly collide with neighboring molecules of the gas. Thus begins a sequence of chemical reactions. Daylight is a result of these reactions. It happens much lower than the Sun and the Moon, at 40 to 80 km altitude, in the material environment in the ionosphere that is the upper part layer of the atmosphere. This part has a relation with the element of fire as we saw in the Book 3 and not with the element of air that the lower layers in the homosphere have. Every blue, red, yellow and their shades is light produced in the ionosphere due to the ionization of these gases. It is not scattered or refracted light. It is light called daylight plasma and it begins and ends where reactions take place. The electrically excited molecules of the argon element and also of hydrogen fluoresce a blue color giving this characteristic color to the sky. Neon is the source of every yellow, orange or red. It is more easily ionized with a minimal amount of electromagnetic energy and from a greater distance. For this reason, we see these colors first and last before sunrise and after sunset. Gases in the heterosphere and more specifically in the ionosphere, as we have seen, are separated into layers just like liquids in normal conditions with different densities. Each gas is in a layer and separated from the others. The separation is done according to the molecular weight and density of each element. These gases start from 40 to 80 km and above, occupying the homosphere, the thermosphere and the ionosphere. There is helio, neon, argon, krypton, xenium, radon, monoatomic oxygen, 
methane, hydrogen. All of these gases are separated from the heavier air masses below. Far from the sun in these layers, we have these gases inert and under very low pressures. When the sun approaches, they are excited, ionized, creating plasma daylight, while when the sun leaves, the reactions from ionization stop and the daylight disappears. It is a plasma effect similar to gas discharge lamps, but on a massive scale. Depending on the properties of each element, we have a different way of ionization. Ionized molecules produce heat, electromagnetism, radio waves, IR and UV radiation, light and the magnetic field. In the homosphere below, the gases are mixed and that is the layer where the weather phenomena and the water cycle occur. Water vapor in this layer gives a white tint to the color of the sky. Here there is nitrogen, oxygen, water vapor and other gases. Water vapor and normal air are ionized at very low pressure producing white light. Plasma Moon, Moon. <laughs> Cosmic electromagnetic energy coming from below reflects into the inner upper part of the field and is refracted and printed further down that is being focused. The Moon is created at the boundary of the ionosphere with the ether at a height of about 5,500 kilometers. Having a diameter of about 51 kilometers and shaped like a lens, it constitutes the negative refraction of cosmic energy. We have ionization of the element krypton or of the ether in that area and the lower material field is imprinted, giving us the map of the Earth like an X-ray or the film negative showing transparent the places where there is land while illuminating the places where there is water. It is a concentrated ionization of the ether of great precision giving the essence of the background floor of the earth. Plasma stars, stars. The stars are the individual ionization of the ethereal ceiling that separates the inner ethereal field from the outer fields, planets, moving stars. These ionizations occur due to the direct energy from the depths of the seas and from energy points of the Earth that comes from below upwards like the Moon, but a level higher. The map of the Earth is also depicted in the stars, with each star corresponding to a point on the Earth. In the night sky and on the stars, we can't see the whole map of the Earth, like on the Moon, but a part of it, about half, and this happens because there, the capsule is not in focus. On the Moon we see the entire sky if we process its image with brightness and contrast. Constellations and stars are formed. But since the Moon is the imprint of the Earth, there is a correspondence between the parts of the Earth and the stars. Each energy point 
and each vast depth of the sea is imprinted as a star with a size corresponding to the intensity of the cosmic radiation emerging there. Every night, we see a piece of the total sky in the star print layer. Due to the different speed of this layer in relation to the Sun, we see different constellations every season. Plasma fields imprints planets. Mercury and Venus ethereal fields leave their imprint on the top of their field, showing what is included below, ethereal cosmic energy plus and minus. They are cosmic energy fields and what we see are plasmatic imprints. Both of them, one field ceiling above, they shape Mars ethereal field. What we see as Mars is a plasmatic imprint from Mercury and Venus together. Mars field is included in Jupiter under certain circumstances. It is the red dot inside Jupiter, making a certain route inside it. What we see as Jupiter is a plasmatic imprint of what is included below on this field ceiling. Jupiter and its satellites are included in Saturn field. The ring of Kronos is the imprint of the satellites like a photo with open aperture and the inner part is Jupiter but one field ceiling above. What we see as Kronos is the plasmatic imprint of all the lower fields that include it. Saturn is included in the largest field of Uranus. What we see as Uranus is the plasmatic imprint on the top of this field ceiling of all the fields that are included here. <laughs> 